Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Welcome back to my shop. So I have got no less than 10 different wrenches here on my workbench, and believe it or not, none of these wrenches fulfill the specific need that I have. I think we're gonna have to design and 3D print our own wrench. So let's go over to what I need the wrench for, and I'll explain what's going on. So I picked up a new tool for the shop. This is a horizontal bandsaw, and I have actually put this purchase off for a while for a number of reasons, because A, they cost money, and uh, B, I really wasn't sure where I'm gonna put it, and honestly, I'm still not sure where I'm gonna put it. But it was time to get it, because the pieces of stock that I've been buying for projects in the lathe just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and this four inch piece of solid 4140 is a perfect example of that. There's other ways I could cut this. I mean, you could probably cut it with an angle grinder if you were patient enough and didn't care that you were wasting tons of expensive material. Uh, I can also cut this in my vertical band saw, but it takes an eternity and you're standing at the saw pushing on it the whole time. Uh, this saw, I can lay this piece of uh, round bar uh, in here and uh, this is gravity fed, uh, feed rate control with a hydraulic cylinder and it just does it for you and you end up with a nice piece of parallel cut faces that you can put right into the lathe. So it was time to get it. So the reason why this machine is in today's video is because of this knob right here. This is what sets the tension on the saw blade. So uh, this saw has a cast iron wheel here, a cast iron wheel over here that's driven by this motor and gearbox, and the saw blade is continuous. It runs all the way around in a circle. And by turning this knob, it actually draws this block this way, basically stretching out the blade, and there's a certain amount of tension you want on the blade so you get a nice straight cut. And in fact, uh, they ship it here, like halfway between the blue and the yellow, and you're supposed to bring it over centered in the high tension box before using it. I actually thought this knob was stuck at first because I couldn't really tighten it with one hand at all. I did eventually realize that I could loosen it uh, with one hand if I really, really pull on it. It's actually, I'm right-handed and I'm trying to use my left, so it's super hard to, to turn it in either direction. It's not stuck, and if I put two hands on it, I can tighten it and loosen it, but it is really, really hard to turn. So I'd like to make a wrench for this knob, and you can see the shape that it's in. So we've basically got to come up with a wrench that is gonna fit over that shape. All right, I got you guys in a tripod so I can use both hands. So turning this clockwise would tension the blade and turning it counterclockwise would slack the tension off. I can turn it counterclockwise with one hand. It's still hard to turn, but I can do it. I literally cannot turn this uh, clockwise with one hand. I need two hands to do it, and that's just a pain. So I really like to make a wrench for this so that I'm not killing my wrist uh, to do it, and we can do it a lot quicker. So I've never designed a wrench for one of these before, but I have designed one of these knobs for another project. And they're generally speaking, not as hard to design as you would think. You don't need that many dimensions to get this right. Uh, the first one is uh, your tip to tip uh, dimension. So from here to here. So if we measure this, it's right about 80 millimeters. Now, the second one is, you have to imagine these, these curved sections here as um, other circles, other diameters that are, uh, that their the radius is basically centered on a larger diameter uh, that orbits the, the diameter uh, here for, from the center point out to these tips. Now we could probably kind of eyeball that with this as a starting point, but the easier thing to do is to just go around your shop, find something that is about the right diameter that it fits nicely in this semicircle that we have here, and then you can measure that and then measure this distance, the shortest distance here, which in this case is about 63, and then just use that as a starting point. Now, when you're designing a knob to match another knob, you don't need to be that close. I mean, you get it close enough that it's, it visually matches, it's good enough. In this case, we're gonna have to get pretty darn close because I want this wrench to be a good fit, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna start by uh, just drawing that circle and then trying to figure out what my larger diameter is that these other circles are, um, are essentially on orbiting this one. All right, and here is my design space for this. And I wanted to show you this first because this is what I was talking about where we have a single diameter here in the center. Uh, I then use the polygon tool to get um, six even points and I have basically lines projecting out, and then I've got these, uh, these additional circles out here centered on those, and I figured out the overlap to try and get close. And you see I go from that to basically 
this shape here, it's the exact same thing. I could fit this on top of this and then from this to this, just again, getting rid of the geometry that I don't need. Uh, now it's starting to look pretty darn close to the head of that plastic nut. And then coming up to this, this is essentially our design. It's the inverse of that. And then I just thickened it up so that we can slip it over and see if it fits. So I'm gonna stop here. I don't wanna go any further because there's no point in trying to design the rest of the wrench when we don't know if this is gonna fit yet. So, all right, I'm gonna print this out and uh, let's see how it fits. All right, our first test piece is done. Let's see how it fits. And it does not fit. And just quickly eyeballing where the light's coming through here. I think the biggest issue is that the tips of the star or whatever you wanna call this are too narrow. Uh, I just, I, wasn't really sure exactly how that was shaped and I just kind of guessed from my desk and yeah, that's not right. If you could see it's hitting out here at the tips. I think it's also a little bit overall too big. Uh, I think I added two millimeters to this just so that we'd have a nice sliding fit and that was too much. Um, I think even when I fixed that, uh, which I think I'm probably gonna go with a slightly tighter diameter. It looks like I just wanna arc in, um, arc back in tighter than coming out to this point. So I'll make that adjustment. I'm also going to close up our clearances a bit. It looks like we have a solid, I added two millimeters to this and I can see one millimeter there and I can see one millimeter down here as well. So, all right, I'm gonna make those changes. I'll bring you back. All right, and here is our updated print. You can see I added a little bit of a handle to this as well, just to kind of get a feel for how much leverage we're gonna need for this. And you know what, that is still loose. I tightened it up, I guess I, I wussed out. I did not tighten it enough because I don't want that much play in it. Uh, the looser this is, the more of a chance we risk in rounding over part of these corners. If you look at where this guy's contacting, it's contacting all the way up there towards the tip. I'd like to contact uh, further down here. And I think our overall, yeah, our overall diameter at these tips is still just a little bit big. Not by much. I think I'm gonna take maybe, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 millimeters off of that and see how it fits. All right, I'm gonna go adjust this, I'll bring it back. All right, here is our updated print. Pretty much looks exactly the same, but it should be a little bit tighter on there. Oh yeah. Yeah, that fits. That fits really good. It doesn't get hung up. You know, it goes on freely, but the fit's really good and you can see a much wider contact point there. First of all, it's a little bit further down into the radius, but it's also a wider point of contact. I don't know if the camera can, yeah, it's, I think the camera's probably picking up that one even better. All right, that gets us to the size uh, that we need here for the wrench head. I think it's time to start thinking about how we actually design the rest of the wrench. So I'm gonna scratch my head a bit. I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, and here is the final design for this. And as usual, I probably spent more time on this than I needed to. I really kind of wanted to make this look like a wrench. So I've got a nice inset here. Try to get the shape just perfect. Uh, put a hole in here to hang it on. And while we don't have this inset matched on the other side because I don't want this guy to print with any supports and have a mess to clean up, I did do a matching bevel on each side. At 45 degrees, that should have no problem printing uh, both on uh, our wrench faces here as well as the outside diameter and the, uh, the inside diameter of the hanging hole as well. So it should be fairly comfortable in the hand to hold. So, all right, I'm gonna get this printed out and uh, let's make sure that it fits and see if it's gonna work. I thought I'd show you the slicing settings for this since strength is really gonna be important on this wrench. The number one thing that's important when you want strength from a part is the number of outer walls. And then second to that would be the infill. A lot of people say the infill doesn't matter at all. I disagree. I think the infill does play a part in the strength of the part. It also uh, gives you nice clean top surfaces. If you don't have enough infill, you're not gonna end up with nice, flat, strong surfaces on the top of your part. So I started with the strength profile here, the 0.2 millimeter height one. And the only things I really changed were the top shell layers and the bottom shell layers. I increased both of them. Uh, I think they use too few layers and that does also add to the strength because that's essentially your outer walls on your top and bottom faces. And here, if I slice this, probably give you a better idea of what's going on. We'll drop down into the center of it. You can see there's six outer walls here on both the, uh, the part of the wrench that's gonna go over that plastic nut as well as on all of the outside uh, dimensions. Uh, I did gyroid for the infill on 30%. Yeah, it's probably more density than I need. I bet we could get away with 15%, but I do want this wrench to have some weight 
to it. I don't want it to be like heavy, like a real wrench, but I would like it to feel not hollow. So, all right, I'm going to uh, finish slicing this and get this sent off to the printer and uh, see what we end up with. All right, guys, pause the video. Tell me down in the comments below, what do you think is gonna happen? Will I make it one full rotation with this wrench? I think we will, just based on how the, like our thin test wrench performed. Now that one had nowhere near the leverage of this one. This one is quite a bit longer, but I think this is gonna be plenty strong enough. But pause the video, let me know down in the comments below, what do you think is gonna happen? Will I get this blade tensioned up to the correct tension or will the wrench snap? All right, I moved you guys over here so that I can stand at the end of the saw and you guys can also see the tension here on the blade. I'm, I'm gonna try and go around one full rotation, uh, holding on to basically the end of the wrench so that we're subjecting the whole wrench uh, to the force it takes to turn this. Yeah, that's a... Uh, I don't hear any creaking or anything out of the wrench. It does, that noise is just the wrench slipping around on, um, on our plastic nut. Actually, we are, we're there. It looks like it was only about one and a half uh, full rotations uh, to get there. It's funny, trying to turn this thing by hand, I wasn't even really seeing that move, but you can go a lot faster with this. And I assume, slacking that tension, oh yeah, it turns a lot easier in this direction. Yeah, that is, that is nice. Using it does have me wondering if it would have been worth it to uh, have sort of like a, uh, something, like a stop, something to keep this from slipping off, either uh, fully enclosed, so it was more like a socket with a dedicated handle, um, or having just something to keep it from going uh, past like that. But for the amount of times this thing's gonna get used, that's probably fine. It's not like it's actively trying to slip off. It's trying to lift the whole saw because the torque required to turn this. But yeah, that should be fine. All right, so our lowly 3D printed plastic wrench did what every one of those wrenches couldn't do. Well guys, that ended up being a little bit anticlimactic. I kind of expected this to, to creak or groan or flex or bend a little bit, but uh, no, it was, Total champ for that. In fact, I don't think we're anywhere near the yield strength of this wrench. I think uh, between the six walls and our fairly dense gyroid infill, this thing is honestly overkill for that application, but that's good. I mean, that's what a wrench should be. Um, in a typical application, you're, you know, a wrench that you're using for, for something should be you know, probably 10X uh, what it would actually take to, uh, you know, to cause that wrench to yield. So I'm happy with that. Guys, as always, thanks for joining me out here in the shop for today's design and video. It's always really nice to have you guys along. And as I always say, if there's anything that you would have done differently or that you can think of to improve on this design, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And if you happen to have one of these same uh, horizontal bandsaws, uh, the STL will be available for this, just like all the designs we do here on the channel on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And that is linked down in the description of the video. If this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's just, it's all functional prints. I don't do any of the multicolored garbage of the week uh, that you see a lot of the other channels do. It's all engineering and functional prints just like this. Some of them are from scratch designs. Some of them just add features to other stuff I've already got around the house or in the shop or out in the yard. So if you like that sort of thing, check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.